Now recently, uh, on a variety of uh, videos in the comments section, there's been a glut of <laughs> traditionalists slinging mud, calling people names, and I'm not going to name specific names of the people doing it, but uh, there's there's been a plenty, put it that way. And uh, names ranging from uh, asshole, twat, homosexual, uh, degenerates, everything you can imagine under the sun. It also shows you the strength of their position and their arguments. But <coughs> the funny thing is, what's so conspicuous about all the, well, when they're arguments at all, and not just name-calling, uh, arguments with the traditionalists is women are sort of glossed over. So they like to blame <laughs> a small group of men, <laughs> a very small group of men going their own way, for quote unquote turning their backs on their biological imperatives and uh, and prescriptions. But uh, we have nothing to do with the the mass of uh, divorce filings that took place in the 70s and basically continued more or less unabated. We have nothing to do with that. Um, so let's talk about the concept of Pandora's box, and you know, Barbara Ross has talked about that in the past. <coughs> when the metaphorical lid to Pandora's po box was uh, ripped open, I think Barbara Ross, I'm paraphrasing, put it once, uh, wrenched uh, away with such force that it's never coming back, uh, it wasn't men, well, it's complicated, but it certainly wasn't men who are responsible for the consequences. Men men going their own way or other men did not force women to get uh, divorced en masse. They didn't force women to take advantage of social welfare programs. <coughs> they didn't force women, men have not forced women to take advantage of government quota systems and men have not forced women to quote unquote abandon the nuclear family. Women, women chose to do that. I'm going to say it slowly women, with the freedoms they had gained, chose to abandon the nuclear family and take advantage of all the perks and cookies that were given to them as a consequence of politicized feminism. That's what happened. Men are not to blame here. And you can sit around calling us and other men names all you want, but First off, most of us weren't alive at the time, and uh, a couple of hundred or thousand men who have chosen to go their own way uh, were certainly, uh, these men are not responsible for the masses of women out there in the world, not just in the United States, getting uh, divorce after divorce. Uh, I, it's just so conspicuous how they just gloss over that women have no responsibility in this. It's, it's all on the man. Now, <coughs> Barbarossa, and I'll post a link made an excellent video a while back, a while, while back, on how uh, the cycles of traditionalism, how they lead to feminism. I suggest everyone watch that. The reason being that you know, paternalism, patriarchy, is often cited as the building block of civilization. And guess what? No one has ever denied that, in fact, Barbaros, I believe correctly, assesses it to be the building block of civilization. It is what happens within that building block of civilization to the female, that she becomes completely infantilized, that she becomes, uh, at least within the context of the paternalistic patriarchal system, uh, so, uh, well, useless in every respect apart from uh, reproduction, that uh, you create the conditions, some of the groundwork, <coughs> for a quote-unquote feminized society. The Male and male competition creates uh, the atmosphere where innovation and invention and progress uh, just explode. And you get a, a situation that we're living in today pretty much where uh, technology and invention and um, various creations, virtually all of them made by men, have made life a lot easier for all of us. The fact that I'm making this, using audacity, making use of the internet and so on and so forth. All of these things were, uh, yes, in the past, a result of paternalism and patriarchy. 
But you see what happened and what the tradi traditionalists uh, don't want to admit and what the, they, they refuse to admit. I, I assume it's because they're afraid of conceding to themselves because of uh, how, how it horrifies them. <coughs> when women uh, realized that the conditions of life had become such that it was uh, not only plausible but extremely feasible to escape uh, the patriarchal uh, dynamic, the system uh, that they had chosen to live under. It was their own choice. And at best were exposed to a form of benevolent sexism. And they said, well, we don't even want that anymore because the achievements of men had made life so easy for them. Well, they decided to leave. <laughs> Who forced them? No one. They chose, they saw advantages in a, in a new form of civilization, a modernized, mechanized, comfortable civilization where they were not constantly exposed to danger and they took advantage of it. I mean, so many, th the, the birth control pill, automobiles, public transportation, uh, toiletries, uh, refrigerators, uh, you name it, the list can go on and on. I mean, they, they saw that, they said, well, we don't need to live in this anymore. And you can kind of look at it as a, uh, a collective version on the part of women of the corollaries of Briefo's law, namely one and two. A past benefit provided by the male does not provide for continued or future association. Any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit. Well, what do I mean by that, collectively speaking? <coughs> well, collectively speaking, women uh, decided to get up and leave and they had no regards for the past achievements, contributions of men. They just didn't want any part of it. The benefits had already been provided, and they got up and left. Ask yourself if the uh, cute little 20-year-old girl or even the 30-year-old woman on the subway system punching away at her iPad or iPhone cares, A, how the iPad or iPhone works, cares that the technology was created by a man, or cares that the technology ultimately in terms of the its heritage can be linked back to a guy like Alexander Graham Bell. It, probably not. In fact, I'm willing to bet money she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care about anything. She, all she cares about is what she has now. Women got up and left of their own free will when the opportunity presented itself and when the conditions in society had been made such that it was feasible for them and they've been running wild ever since, and they don't want to be part of the patriarchy anymore. Uh, you know, they, don't, they don't care that men made the world safe for them, and it's a fallacious claim to blame men. I mean, this is, what, this is, this is, this is misandry. Uh, these traditionalists repeatedly blame men. It's men's fault. Women have no part in this. It's amazing that um, the co-concept of no-fault divorce, for example, that it, it was up to women to make the uh, to file the claims uh, to file for divorce <laughs> they chose to do that and yet it's men are blamed for this I mean, a, a small group of men uh, men going their own way are blamed for a 70 pl uh, percent plus divorce rate that's not only just consistent in the United States uh, sorry no, initiated by women but in places like Indonesia as well I mean everywhere in the world you look it's pretty much consistent how how are men involved in this? And more importantly, since I see, I mean, logically, there are only a few options. Uh, if you really wanted to get back to patriarchy, it would have to be involve either some kind of mass conver con coercion, coercive attempt on the part of men against women. You would literally have to enslave women. I don't, and I, I, this time I actually really, really enslave them, force them to uh, go back to a situation that they clearly wanted nothing uh, nothing of anymore. They didn't want to be part of it anymore. That's why they rejected it en masse. Or, and I think ultimately, this is my, I think I, this is my honest assessment, this, w w traditionalists want us to be, uh, to blow ourselves back to the Stone Age. Because it really, only conditions of the Stone Age, of uh, prehistory, where we're living in, you know, stone and straw huts, uh, eking out a wretched existence on some barren plain in the wilderness, uh, risking our lives, Yes, then we'll have patriarchy, and then we'll have paternalism. Uh, maybe, if I'm generous, bombing ourselves back to the pre-industrial era. I mean, these guys really want to go back to the Mad Max scenario. Quite frankly, I don't. 
Um, but unless that happens, unless we bomb ourselves back to, and like I said, being generous, some pre-industrial uh, like a situation or or a prehistorical situation where we're just running around uh, hunting impalas and what have you, we're not going back to the the patriarchy. It's dead. It's dead. And you can rant on about it and call us names all you want, but we're not going back there. So until all these traditionalists who enjoy uh, slinging mud so much come up with uh, better solutions than uh, blaming a, f a few men who've cho chosen to go their own way, men as a collective, or, uh, well, whatever other uh, theory suits their, ne their needs, uh, you know, Marxist, socialists, Jews, etc., and so on and so forth, uh, I want to hear what they're, how, how they're going to usher in the patriarchy again. Now, instead, instead of just ranting on about how... Cause it, my position, as well as position of many others, is it, it's dead. It's not coming back. Women didn't want to be part of it anymore, and that's why they chose and left. And guess what? Guess what? Because men throughout history have always granted what women wanted. When women said, we didn't want to be part of it anymore, men gave it to them. They gave, men gave them the pill. They gave them no-fault divorce. Men gave them the freedom to do whatever they wanted. Because that is, in essence, what the illusion of patriarchy is. It's a form of matriarchal rule by proxy, where the man labors for the sake of the woman, where the woman's concerns come first. And so what happened in the uh, mid or mid late 20th century was nothing new. It was just men doing what they've always done, giving women exactly what they wanted. And women got up and left. Do you get that? I mean, do I need to spell it out? They chose of their own free will to get up and leave. They said, see ya, and they didn't look back. And you can rant on about how paternalism had, yes, that is the pluperfect, yeah, the past past, had uh, brought about all these great things, uh, creations and innovations, civilization, and that's true. Just like I can rant on about the glories of Rome, or the time when the Fertile Crescent was the apex of civilization. That's all true as well. But it's done, and it's gone, and it's not coming back. If you don't believe me, you can look at the ruins of Rome. <clears throat> but I don't know how much more anyone can spell this out to these guys. They simply insist on blaming uh, men collectively and specifically, specifically men going their own way. <laughs> we, have almost no, we have no influence whatsoever. Uh, on the masses of women getting divorced, uh, taking advantage of alimony, and just basically doing their own thing without any sort of uh, introspection as to who, who brought it all about, namely men, without any sort of uh, concern for the, the lives of the men they destroy. No, it's all, it's all men's fault. So this is <clears throat> typical, it's not even covert, but typical misandry. And uh, you see it in, their, in the lines of their arguments, calling men degenerates or, or homosexuals because they don't, they don't, they made these men, specifically men going their own way, we choose not to get in line and just uh, follow the dictates of what we're quote unquote supposed to do. So, yeah, Pandora's box, yeah, the lid has been wrenched forth. It's, it's, we cannot put the lid back on. And I challenge anyone to come up with a way other than blowing ourselves back to the Stone Age, living in, 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 some, uh, in some cave somewhere uh, you know, 30,000 years ago, uh, or at best some sort of pre-industrial state. If you can come up with a scenario better than that, or coercively forcing women, collectively speaking, to, to go back to the picture, I mean, th this is a pipe dream. So, you know, less name-calling, less accusations founded on nothing, uh, and more solutions. I mean, and of, of course, one solution I've heard, sorry, is that <laughs> we've always lived in the patriarchy and we continue to live in a patriarchy. Well, what is the patriarchy? Uh, let me just make it clear that the patriarchy really is a, 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 a code in, uh, for a more, more or less covert matriarchal rule. You know, the power of women throughout history has been, for the most part, covert. Uh, I'm thinking about doing this at some point in time, but for example, if you look at women's input in American Prohibition, it's incredible. You should do the, some of the, do some reading on that. So women have always, almost always informed men's decisions, and the direct direction 
that society took was often based on uh, women's um, behind-the-scenes input and behind-the-scenes wishes. Well, now women not only have covert influence, uh, we have, uh, they have overt influence. Gynocentrism has always been present, and the patriarchy was no exception. Uh, men did have the tools, or more uh, the authority, to exercise certain things, but it was all done in the service of women. Yes, gynocentric. So all you patriarchs out there, you're just as gynocentric as all the rest. Serve the women's. Anyway, there's a bit of a rant, but uh, yeah, we're not going back to the patriarchy. It's done. You know, like the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs once ruled the earth. They were fierce. They, they had T-Rex and Allosaurus, fearsome predators. It's done. They're not coming back. Do you get that? Entiendes? Do you understand? It's done. I, I don't. I, what scenario can you come up with? What scenario can you come up with where the patriarchy comes back? Hey. Okay other than blowing ourselves back to the Stone Age, to, to some, some Mad Max wasteland, yeah, we'll get paternalism again. I mean, yeah. Anyway, you come up with some solutions, you traditionalists, nice traditionalist folk, and uh, we'll just continue doing our own thing. And uh, your solutions, I would suggest, really actually have to be uh, effective and actually have to be realistic. And accusing a couple of men of uh, rejecting their biological prescriptions and imperatives, that's not a solution. And calling, calling men a variety of creative names isn't a solution either. The patriarchy is dead. Live with it. Deal with it. That's life.